Bandi, kindly tell us your name and the origin, your your original place, your native town, and your uh, citizen place. So my name is uh, my name and its name is Santu. My uh, Dharma name is uh, Usantu Tha. I was originally born in Vietnam, and I. Uh, left Vietnam 
for the U.S. when I was 18. So now I live in the U.S. near San Francisco. Bundy, uh, let us know about your age and your wasa, please. Oh. Uh, so this year is 2018, so I am 61. And uh, I am here as a uh, temporary monk. So I have no wasa. Mm -hmm. Every year I, I come here um, for the last um, five years now. And I ordain as a monk and I practice as a monk. And before I come home, I disrobe. Mm -hmm. So as a lay person, what do you do? I, uh, now I, I am a, uh, I'm semi-retired. Um, I'm a consultant in the uh, IT industry. Bande, the place you, you're living in now is America. America is filled with joy. I mean, sensual pleasure and luxury and full of fun. So, but uh, you are inclined into Dhamma. Mm -hmm. and you're more interested in Dhamma. And how did you find it? And uh, is it your traditional Religion, Buddhism is your traditional tr religion or not? Mm. Please let us know. I will shorten. It's a it's a long story, but um, so I uh, when I left Vietnam, uh, as you may know, Vietnam is uh, Mahayana, yes, mostly Mahayana. So when I came to the U.S., um, I studied graduated, uh, have a family, have a job. And then just one day decides to know more about Buddhism instead of just going to the temple at New Year and make offerings. One day we, uh, I just decide to uh, find out more and then uh, Luckily, we, uh, it was a group of us, all Mahayana, and luckily we found uh, Sayadaw Usilananda. You, you may know him. And uh, very kind, and he taught us a lot. He, we asked a lot of questions. And then Sayadaw slowly taught us the, um, the true Dhamma. Um, and then we uh, met Sayadaw Upandita, and he's, he's also very kind in uh, teaching us how to uh, practice. Friends, Dharma, friends interested in the Dharma, so it's now we formed later, we formed uh, um, a meditation center called Tathagata Meditation uh, Center. Tathagata Meditation That's Center. Our group. When you were introduced to Dhamma, you found it satisfied uh, or you search, you seek for the truth uh, and then seeking, seeking, seeking and you become satisfied. Yes, it's like that. Which one? Yeah, seeking, seeking. Yeah, but um, but uh, as I said earlier, we are very fortunate to uh, meet Sayadaw uh, Usilananda because um, because he has to uh, remove a, lo a, a lot of uh, wrong idea. Yeah. Uh, so it's not easy, mm -hmm. as you may know. Uh, if you don't know anything, then it's very easy to teach. Yeah. But if you know the wrong thing, uh, and someone, if not skillful, says that, oh, you are wrong, then your mana might take over, right? So. So we are fortunate to, uh, to meet uh, Sayadaw Usilananda. We don't know why, but we know that this is the true the Dhamma. Truth, Dhamma. Yes. That we, we have that. I mean, this is uh, generally, generally, uh, it depends on their parameter, their parameter, their background knowledge, and their parameter. And, uh, and uh, 
as a bendi, as for you, uh, you. Some people, they find it smooth, easy to understand, to get the insight easily and smoothly without much difficulty. But some people, they have a lot of difficulties uh, to, uh, to get a glimpse of, uh, a glimpse of insight, I mean, uh, so which, 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 uh, which one you, do you belong to? I, I don't know. That's that's up to my my meditation teacher to say. I I just I just practice. I, I don't know whether I'm a slow person or a fast person. Some people they start with meditation directly. No? they are directly they are directly. Some people they learn first, then they apply. They apply that. I mean, they meditate. Mm -hmm. And our Bendy, what about you? So we. Um, Actually, with uh, Sajiro Usilananda, we do both. So, um, at the beginning, we organize is a retreat, meditation retreat, once a month mm -hmm. at uh, somebody's house. Mm -hmm. So, if uh, someone in the group who has a big house, then uh, on uh, weekends, Saturday and Sunday, uh, once a month, we host a meditation retreat. In that meditation retreat, we practice. And then during the Dhamma talk, Sayadaw will, Sayadaw Usilananda will explain mostly the uh, suttas and nikayas. And so we start with that. And we practice mostly once a month. And then slowly, slowly, he taught us. Um, Kalyana, Uttujana, a well-informed Buddhist. Uh, he taught us a uh, little bit of that to get us ready, and then he taught us uh, Abhidhamma, and then he taught us Satichasamupada. Um, so slowly, slowly we learn more on the um, theoretical side while we continue to practice with him, uh, with Sayyidaw Kipapanyo, and then with uh, Sayyidaw Upanita. We would like to, for example, I want to take meditation, but there's a sort of motivation behind my thinking, you know, thinking behind my decision, you know. There must be a sort of motivation or a kind of reason for causes uh, that push me up into the practice. So. If possible, if possible, let us know about some people, for example, some, due to the lamentation, due to sorrow, or due to soka or stress, and such kind of uh, causes are uh, give push me to that place. And then let us know about why you decided to uh, take meditation that day. Some are fortunate and say they live near the temple and they see the monks all the time and that's how they they get into meditation. Yes. Just simple like that. Yes. Some have some disappointment in life and all that and they say, oh, I'm, I have to run away from life. But they're also, uh, in my case, it just that one time, uh, one day when life is so settled, you know, graduated from university, got a good job, bought a house, have a family. So I think for me, the natural next step is to look for something spiritual. Oh, yes. it, it comes naturally. Yeah. So I go to, at the beginning, I go to a Mahayana Vietnamese temple. So I went in there and I asked them, I said, so what do you do to practice? And then they said, oh, here's the book. Every morning we chant. Uh, you light the candle and you chant. So I said, is that what monks and nuns here do? And they say, yes. 
we do this one in the morning and one at night, something like that. I said, okay. So I, I borrowed that book, I went home, and every morning I do the same thing. But after uh, know, three or six months, I, I said, this is not it. I'm not satisfied. So that's, that's why I, I looked. And then I found these uh, friends who were also looking. And then someone in the group found Sayyidaw Usi Lananda. That's how, that's how it, it went for me. Through learning Dhamma, Dhamma said, I mean, Priyati, uh, I mean, of what you were learning, Sayyidaw under the guidance of Sayyidaw Usi Lananda Bhivamsa, or while during your practice. This is what I look for, something like that. One more bit of details. With Sayyidaw Usi Lananda, at the end of his uh, Dhamma talks, he always allows us to ask questions. So that's different from the format, say, with Sayyidaw Upanita, for example. Right? So he will preach, uh, let's say, a sutta. And then at the end, he said, do you have any questions? So we ask. As I mentioned earlier, we ask a lot of, uh, I, I call it stupid questions. Right? Um, um, but Sayyidaw was very uh, patient and kind. And he always said, this, 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 this. And he doesn't want to offend anyone. So sometimes he said, oh, I don't know. Sometimes. Mm -hmm. But later on, I know that he knows. It's just that he doesn't want to say, oh, that's wrong or something. Mm -hmm. so, um, so through, through his teaching and slowly open up our understanding, it's not one thing. It's not because we sit one day and we decide, oh, this is it. it it's not that. It's just a combination of uh, being around with Sayadaw learning, asking questions, and sitting. I think all of that comes together, that the whole group say, this is it. And the group gets bigger and bigger. So that's why we had to go buy a piece of land and form a center, because no house is big enough to, to hold a retreat. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then in 1991, we invited Sayyidaw Ji Upanita to come to the U.S. to lead the retreat. Three weeks. Three weeks. Three weeks for the first time. Um, there's a lot of uh, details, but I'll make it short. In one Nama talk, Sayyidaw Ji scolded us uh, because we did not know how to practice properly. For the whole Nama talk, one hour, he scolded us. Oh, you know, I sacrificed, left behind many things, came here. You don't practice properly. You waste my time. You waste your time. So he scolded us. But, and then, Sayyidaw, Tamari Chaw Sayyidaw. He asked Tamari Chaw Sayyidaw to go out, teach us how to be mindful continuously. Because when we sit, we sit very well. Very quiet, rising, falling. So at the end, when it's time to do walking, we just get up and we go here, go there. He said, you know, Usi Lananda is very kind. I mean, he knows this group is new, so he doesn't enforce. But not Sayyidaji, you know Sayyidaji. So Sayyidaji scolded us, and then he sent Tamari Jaw Sayyidaw out to say, teach this group how to be mindful. And after the Dhamma talk, oh, we, we uh, actually, uh, we appreciate Sayyidaji very much uh, to, to, uh, to tell us how to practice properly. You know? And then from then on, we, we practice correctly. So we, uh, we always uh, said, uh, 
we are very fortunate. We have uh, Sayero Lucy Lananda, Sayero Kipa Panyo as mother. Mm. Huh? The mother always <laughs> <laughs> pleases the children. And, but we have Sayero Sri Upanita as our father. <laughs> so we are very fortunate to have both the mother and the father. So when we talk about the group of us, uh, the group that you have Tama friends, those who are interested in Tama, so you, you, you put up, uh, you, you set up a group and how about the family, do they belong to the group or not? Yes. So, most people um, are husband and wife, most, most of them husband and wife. Some are husbands only like me at the beginning. My, my kids are young and um, my wife, uh, she was not interested in, in all of this, but she supports me. And some other members the same way. Um, and as you know, in the US, we don't have a lot of vacations. And uh, to uh, to take your vacation and to go on a retreat, or to take your weekends for a retreat, uh, that's a sacrifice on the family's side. And so uh, sometimes we have to balance it. You have to balance. Oh, balance, yes. Balance. So the situation to practice in, um, in the U.S. in particular, I don't know anywhere else, but uh, not easy. You, know, you only you only have a few weeks a year, and then um, uh, if you practice mainly, you have weekends and maybe some holidays, so you don't have uh, an opportunity to practice. You know, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, to to really appreciate the dhamma. So even though we started you know, in 1989 or something, once a month for the weekend retreat. So you, you could see the impact of the practice is not that strong. Uh, the Pariyati uh, is good because then we have Sayyara Usilananda teaching us and all of that, so that, that's easy. But the practice is not very strong. Not, not until we uh, practice long term with uh, Sayyara, Sayyara G, like you know, one month, or we organize a um, 30 day retreat in Sagarajan. In America, uh, some other people uh, nearby, not, not just society, I mean, some people, uh, they, don't, they don't know what you're doing. If they ask you, what you, are you doing? And uh, how would you, what, what is the answer? Uh, it depends on the person who asked the question. I, I look at the, the person. If, if um, the question is not sincere in knowing, in really knowing, then I just find some, some quick way out just to answer like, oh, it's just another hobby that I like to do, or something like that. Then, but if someone truly, I feel that someone truly wants to know who, who might be beneficial, yeah. then you have to take time to explain. You know, it takes me, you're looking for the true happiness and and this is what I think, I don't know yet, but I think this is where the way to find the true happiness, something like that. Everyone has their vision, or mission, vision or ambition, aim of life, or aim in life. We have we set up that goal for now in life. And the day, uh, what's your ambition or aim or goal of, goal of life? Please let us know. Just want to uh, 
to be able to uh, practice the Dhamma uh, until the end of life. We, everyone, we keep on doing uh, because we, we think that we feel it's beneficial for us to keep on. We keep on working, we keep on doing. The reason is we feel or we gain benefit, we, we are beneficial. It's beneficial for us. It's beneficial for us. That's why we keep on working or doing something. And now you, you keep on practicing Dhamma. Is it beneficial? It's beneficial for you to keep on practicing Dhamma. Please let us know the benefit and the uh, benefit. So we, uh, when we practice, uh, typically we, um, we want to uh, end suffering. There are different ways of, of saying it you know, and suffering. Uh, I would like to um, experience uh, Magapala Yanasa. I would like to experience uh, Nibbana. I want to become a Sotapana. So different people might say different things. I, I always think that it's more important for us to focus on the cause. Yes. yes. You, you do, you practice, mm -hmm. and when those things come, they come. Yes. Of course, every now and then, you long for something, you long for seeing something special. And, and, uh, but that was never, that was never my, uh, my main focus. Sometimes during the practice and during the interview, mm, the meditation teacher will say, okay, you go and make the determination that in this uh, sitting you experience something, or you have to aim for at least sotapana, something like that. So sometimes I do. Yeah. But that, that was never my, my thought. I, I just, I said, if I take care of the practice, then the result will take care of itself. Yes. Wendy, uh, before you met uh, Venerable Silanana uh, 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 and uh, after meeting him, you learn, you, and then you practice, you Dhamma, you follow Dhamma, you, uh, you, 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 you live by Dhamma, boy, and before and after you do you think you, 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 you noticed some changes? I mean, just an example, no? please let us. For sure, yeah, for sure. You, uh, you know that you are a better person. And you know that you are more virtuous. Uh, you, know, you know the importance of sila. You know how to practice to keep sila. And what do you do to protect yourself? Um, you know. I, I, I know that I am not a, as good as a person without the Dharma. That's, that's no doubt. So when you go back to, to the States, you, you were disrobed as a lay person. You were back to your job, I mean, to your uh, to the normal life. Or I mean, uh, that you can keep on practicing Dharma uh, uh, by changing uh, any uh, outer appearance, it's um, as you as as I continue to practice uh, that that practice becomes easier. Whether you are a lay person or a monk, it's it's uh, it's a lot easier. Every every year, it gets easier and easier. It becomes more natural. I have some more details like um, at um, Tathagata Meditation Center, I, uh, I also uh, help to uh, coordinate <coughs> retreats. So whenever we have, uh, like Sajra Upanyasami comes in June for 30 days, I coordinate the retreat. I am the translator. I translate from English into uh, Vietnamese. So I'm still very deeply involved with uh, the Dhamma and um, 
and also I study Pali with Sajidaw uh, and Dominic Chaw Sajidaw. So he sent me a lot of things in Pali and I study and all of those things. So we, I still have a lot of, of uh, Dhamma work, even as a lay person. ဒီကုန်ပြုပြီးတော့ပြောသွားတယ်ဟိုကြီးကြီးစကားမှာကြီးကြီးဆိုရင်အမှတ်သားမိပါတယ်အဲ့ဒီကျွန်တော်ဒ